Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine game series and our Human game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and this is our final video for now in the uh, series on Leela using WDL Contempt. Now if you want to know exactly what that is do take a look at the previous videos and also my blog post uh, on it uh, details in the description to the video. But essentially we can tell Leela, um, Leela I'm playing somebody 300, 400 ELO weaker than me, give me some openings that'll really maximise my winning chances and then Leela's going to come up with some incredible stuff. Now we've had two videos on the uh, Nidorf already and uh, Leela suggested the very interesting idea Queen F3 um, rather than the most common idea um, F4 in this position. And uh, I really liked it because uh, when I came back to chess from uh, a long break um, almost 10 years, um, back in 2010, 11. This was a system that I was playing a lot at the time. And uh, actually the idea that I had for it, uh, the reason I wanted to play it, was also the idea that Leela comes up with. So that's quite, uh, quite pleasing to me. So we'd had a look at a few things, uh, mainly systems with, um, with H6. We, that was, uh, we looked at the Top Choice and the High Arcs book. Um, and we also had a look at uh, a recommendation that's in the book by uh, Milos Pavlovich on the um, uh, Sicilian Nidorf. Now, uh, in this video, we're going to have a look at the recommendation of um, David Vigorito in his book on the uh, Nidorf Sicilian, and in particular that of Anish Giri in his Nidorf Chessable course, uh, because Vigorito doesn't consider Leela's ninth move, but uh, Anish does, so um, we'll be uh, having a look at that. Now, how do we get this far? Let's just uh, go through the opening moves just to make sure we're all on the same page. Bishop g5, e6, queen f3, and now knight bd7 is Geary's recommendation. Castles, queen c7. And basically, compared to uh, the High Arcs book recommendation, black is not playing h6, bishop e3. And, uh, well, it's, um, it's, you know, swings and roundabouts, really. When you chase away the bishop, um, well, you know, the way the path is free for the white pawns to advance with g4, h4, g5. Um, obviously, not chasing the bishop away, white's got some pressure on this knight on f6. So, yeah, you know, swings and roundabouts. But this does actually seem to be a pretty interesting recommendation. Now, um, g4 is Leela's idea. Not too surprising, of course. We know that Leela loves uh, g4. And this was actually my idea as well when I played the system. The idea was that... Um, uh, Black can actually play moves like knight e5 takes g4 to win the g-pawn. But then I, want, I, I, I was just claiming that the time Black had wasted plus the open g-file was going to give me good compensation. And um, yeah, you know, very uh, happy with that. And I was also, when Black was playing h6, I was putting the bishop back to d2 in actual fact. So that after knight e5 takes g4, the bishop on e3 wouldn't be attacked. Um, well, Anish uh, doesn't want uh, uh, doesn't want you to uh, grab the g pawn. He wants to play b five, and he wasn't very impressed with uh, nine g four. He said, without the pawn f four, this looks somewhat artificial, and indeed, it doesn't seem to be the most spirited continuation. Shame on you, young man. It's what Leela wants, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is, uh, you know, pretty good continuation for black. As you'll see, you know, I don't think you can really say that you can't say that white's uh, better in this position or anything. I mean, I'm, I'm a lifelong Nidorf player as a professional, played it all the time. So uh, I definitely believe in black's positions, but this is definitely a very interesting option for white. Uh, I think, you know, much more uh, interesting than, uh, than following, uh, you know, 30 or 40 moves of, uh, of theory in the poison pawn. So after b5, um, yeah, Anish considered the move a3. Uh, Leela's choice is to take on f6. And um, um, what I did now, I followed uh, Anish's recommendation a little bit later in his line, which is to take with a g-pawn. So not to, um, to take with a knight when um, we give uh, you know, white this uh, tempo of, uh, of, of g5, but um, to take with a pawn on there, which is quite a well-known idea in the, um, in the, uh, in the Nidorf. And now Leela played the move bishop g2. And I was on my own here. But, um, well, since Anish had recommended a3, I assumed that, um, that b4 must be good. And, in fact, this is something I learned as a child. I'm pretty sure that it was Robert Fisher who, uh, who said that. Um, that um, um, if white doesn't uh, uh, play a3 to stop b4, then black should play b4 immediately. So that's what I did. b4. 
Yeah, I mean, um, White's got a couple of possibilities, e5, knight d5, but um, yeah, if uh, Anish thought it was worth preventing b4, I assumed uh, they weren't good, and indeed I couldn't see anything uh, at all promising to them, and nor could Leela, because Leela went knight e2. So, what is White intending here? Lots of plans, as you can see, I've already put the arrows in there. Um, I mean, White might just move the queen out of the way and play the pawn to f5 here, just to attack the pawn on e6, very common plan. The knight's ready to move to f4 after, to put more pressure on e6. Um, you could also play plans like h4 and g5 to attack the king side in that way. Um, you could also play knight g3 to h5. And uh, what I saw a number of times was Leela playing the king to b1 and then trying to open the c-file, you know, to, uh, to hit the, the black queen. So, yeah, quite a few different plans there. Um, I was a bit... Um, I knew this was going to be my last video. Um, I mean, I played a lot of games against uh, Leela. I'm a bit tired, I have to say, to be honest. So I thought, uh, you know, let's have a, a little bit of a break now. Um, and uh, so I was a bit demob happy, so I, I really went for it, but um, not not at all bad. I think what I did, I played bishop b7, king b1 from Leela. We're getting used to these moves. Or Leela always putting the king safe like that. Um, I mean, it was a mannerism noticed with uh, with Alpha Zero's games against Stockfish Eight all those years ago. And um, well, Leela, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I get the feeling that Leela's doing it even more um, in uh, with this uh, WDL contempt setting uh, than uh, than normal somehow. Um, all sorts of ideas here, um, but um, I went for this move, h5. Basic idea is I want to get rid of this pawn and then I want to play f5 and start attacking e4. I mean, I'm trying to exploit this, you know, rather than uh, white exploiting it by lining up, I want to exploit it myself. Um, I mean, I went wrong later, but um, this is not such a bad plan. Leela played um, um, rookie one, um, and the idea is that um, it looks a little bit odd, um, you know, because you could take on there. But I think the idea is just that I, that was what I assumed anyway, that rook h1 was going to happen. And then we're going to be uh, lining up with rook h7 on this pawn. It's, it's all rather awkward. So I play the move rook g8, just uh, trying to hit that uh, bishop on g2 in a different way. So g takes h5 and now knight c5, hitting e4. And um, yeah, I don't know. I was uh, quite happy with myself. Queen h3, bishop h6, just to stop this knight getting into f4, d5. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was thinking that with black, I had a, a decent play here. Um, but yeah, it's just always, um, yeah, you know, you're always sort of having to make lots of uh, lots of effort with black in these positions and uh, somehow I didn't I didn't quite manage to get my my counterplay right here so um Leela just played the move bishop h1 getting out of the attack castles and then f4 um so yeah i mean at some stage uh, f5 is um, is going to happen um so i played king b8 and then i was a little bit surprised um i wasn't too worried about f5 i can just go e5 um, whoopsie, but um, um, Leela played the move queen h4, which is a little bit irritating, really. Um, I mean, uh, you're protecting this pawn on, on f4, so this knight can now move somewhere if it wants to, all sorts of places. And uh, you're also attacking the pawn on f6, which is a little bit, um, a little bit annoying. Um, I decided to go for it. I took the pawn on e4, takes and takes. Um, which didn't seem too bad. I wasn't afraid of queen f6. I mean, I, I get all sorts of uh, stuff there. Bishop comes to g7, attacking c2. But Leela played the move uh, f5. And here I think I've, I've started to go a bit wrong, unfortunately. Maybe I should just have taken on f5, actually. Um, that was probably a lot more sensible. I really don't know why I didn't do that, you know, looking at it now. Um, I played the move bishop d5. I had all sorts of ideas of sacks on here, you know. I'm always very optimistic, even when I'm playing an engine. But Leela, um, unfortunately, started playing quite well. Took, took, and played the move knight f5, which uh, had obviously escaped me. Um, hitting the bishop on h6, and of course, if e takes f5, then rook takes d5. And even more annoyingly, then uh, queen takes b4 check is happening. So I played bishop g5, queen takes b4 check. Queen b7, I was still thinking that I was doing quite well here, actually, because um, uh, if the queens come off, then, well, I mean, all these pawns are weak. I've got two bishops. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not even sure why I should be worse, to be honest. Um, that was kind of my feeling. Um, I think if it takes, I was planning just to take on here and, uh, you know, do something like this somehow and just claim that I've got, you know, plenty of compensation with my bishops. 
which I think is probably true. Um, unfortunately, Lila played the move queen a5, keeping, uh, um, yeah, just staying attacking this one. And yeah, I mean, there's a d6 pawn behind it, so I can't really move my bishop. And I just found that I, I just couldn't find a way. I, maybe it doesn't even exist, but I couldn't find a way to get my pieces uh, free, simply. And uh, I've got to watch out because stuff like rook d4 to b4 is also coming in. Um, quite apart from the move h4 when my bishop is short of squares you know it's just um, I was a bit struggling a bit to sort of understand why my pieces had suddenly got into such bad positions but they certainly had so queen c7 I played I was looking to exchange off the queens Leela didn't want to so I brought my bishop back but now knight fd4 and uh, yeah a lot of sensitive things are being attacked there so rook g e8 and Leela threw in the rather irritating h4 um, if takes will go knight e6 followed by queen h4 the really annoying thing about it is that the queen's defending the rook on e1, so if rook e8 you can just unpin, which is, uh, yeah, maybe knight f4 is even better, I'm not sure, but, uh, you know, anyway, that sort of thing. Just all hangs together. So I went back to h6, knight came around to c3, we're attacking here. I mean, the problem is with the bishop on h6 now, if I go e5, then knight f5. So um, I played queen c8, and now knight b3. It's the normal thing, I'm just getting uh, squeezed and prodded on both sides. This knight's coming round to a5, and the rook's coming round d4 to b4. So I played d5, and after knight a5, I didn't want to do it, but I played bishop f8 here. Um, the idea being to stop a possible rook d4 to b4. But Lila consolidated with a3. I played bishop a8. I think I was putting all the pieces back in the box there, uh, all retreating to the back rank, and then rook g1. And, uh, yeah... I don't know. I'd seen enough, to be honest. I mean, I, I was just sort of uh, getting a bit fed up with it all. Why is going to play? Uh, has got all sorts of ideas. I mean, rook g4 followed by h6, distracting the rook, and then we can give checks. Um, you know, I, there's also just stuff like just playing rook g6 and then h6. So um, I just decided I was not going to create very much in this position. And so I resigned. So there we are. Interesting. But, um, you know, I, I think that um, the Danish's uh, idea is, um, is uh, yeah, it's pretty decent, actually. It felt like the most um, the most active one. I mean, for example, uh, just uh, the engines here, um, uh, I think it was this uh, Stockfish's idea, it was just playing f5 in this position and after gf going e5, which is rather risky. I mean, there's also uh, 96 in this position, which is quite interesting. But uh, there are all sorts of, um, you know, of active possibilities in uh, in this position. So, um, you know, I, I think it's very interesting for black, very interesting for white, though, because, uh, you know, it's um, a lesser known system um, against the um, the Nidorf. And, well, you've got three games of uh, me struggling against Leela to, um, uh, to help you. And also, yeah, all this um, analysis by... Um, uh, by uh, uh, of Komodo playing against uh, Stockfish, um, yeah, you know, in the associated PGN. So I think that should give, uh, you know, some nice uh, material for uh, for white players there to uh, to make something of this line. But there we are. That has been the series. Um, I'm not saying that I'm uh, going to stop uh, completely. I think I'm probably going to keep on teasing you with um, with. Uh, uh, Leela ideas um, with this contempt setting but um, I'm not sure I'm going to play quite as many games uh, I've been uh, doing it after work uh, or in my lunch break or whatever and uh, found it a bit tiring I have to say quite intense uh, trying to uh, to cope with Leela and uh, and also feeling the pressure of uh, not wanting to look like a complete idiot all the time but uh, anyway, I hope it's proved uh, instructive and um, and interesting I mean uh, this is uh, I mentioned it in Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. Uh, you know, this idea of playing against um, engines, testing yourself in openings. That it's a very powerful way of doing it. And uh, and yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like I've I've learned an awful lot and really got a much better grip on the openings than just looking through engine games. I mean, that gives you a good idea, but until you've really made decisions yourself, felt the, the stress of, oh my goodness, should I do it like this or like this? Am I going to lose or whatever? Um, then I don't think you really, really have a good feel for the opening, you know. it's uh, So uh, definitely do try and do that yourselves. I can thoroughly recommend it. And don't worry, the engine will never tell anyone that it beat you. So uh, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but there we are. I mean, if you liked uh, the video, the series, do give a like, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, take a look at my new books, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and Re-Engineering the Chess Classics, full of stuff by me <laughs> in the way I do things. Uh, so if you enjoy these videos, I think you'd enjoy the books as well. And otherwise, you know, do uh, stay tuned for lots more stuff, lots more engine stuff. 
um, engine inspired stuff on this uh, on this channel and uh, you know thanks for all the comments to this video series it's been really lovely and uh, thanks very much for watching